Hi everybody and welcome to Garden Style. Well, oh my gosh, we have come off one of the busiest months of the year, May. <laughs> it's about the end of May as we speak and in the process of recovery <laughs> right now. Um, for those of you who shopped Sunnycrest Nursery, I want to send out a big woohoo and a thank you to all of you as it has made for a very successful month for us. So I'm finally getting around to doing another video for you guys and thought it would be a good idea to cover some plants that do really well in the hot searing heat as well as crappy soil conditions. <laughs> Being we are getting ready to head into June and get into some of the hottest months of the year, I thought this might be a good idea so that you guys can shop early and pick up some of these specimens for those really difficult areas that you have trouble with um, in getting plants to grow. So the very first plant I'm going to start with is actually a shrub, big dude, and this is one that I purchased, and this is a budleia, or what you would call a butterfly bush. And right now it is just now starting to get its buds on it, it'll probably be in full bloom here in the next week or two. It'll definitely hustle up as soon as I get it in the ground. And this one happens to be kind of a cranberry red color, it's a beautiful color actually. And this will continue to keep blooming right on up until the first frost. Um, now the thing I like about Budleas is they make a great shrub up against a fence or to fill a real bare area where you've got real sandy or clay type conditions. That's not to say you shouldn't plant it with some good composted soil, you absolutely should. But it can withstand real hot heat, in fact it loves it, it does even better when it's warm out. But they're also available in a lot of different colors. Um, now these are real similar, uh, as far as the blooms are concerned, to a lilac bush. And honestly, what I find is when you're planting a lilac bush, you can actually plant the budleias near them so you get a succession of blooms. Because once the lilacs go dormant or start to die off, their blooms do, then the budleias take over with their blooms. So that way you're constantly having a succession of blooms in your sunny areas. Now this particular variety that I have here is called Miss Molly and I'll flash a picture in the corner for you so you can see it up close as to what the blooms look like. And these are pretty hardy shrubs. Um, they are also very deer resistant. Deer do not like to eat them so this is a great uh, border plant uh, especially in your perennial beds. Now this is considered deciduous so it will lose its leaves in the winter time and I've had the best luck with these particular plants when I trim them by a third in the very late winter early spring before you see the leaves starting to form and that way you're getting lots more branching and of course twice as many blooms by the time it gets to its blooming stage which is usually about the end of May beginning of June in most areas anyway so I'm looking for a zone on this so that you can see what it is hardy to they always hide them in the weirdest areas here we go so this is very hardy it's uh, available in zones 5 through 9 which is basically minus 20 degrees so that's pretty good um, I would mulch them in the winter time uh, here in the Northwest we get so much rain that's probably a good idea to use a pine straw or some sort of mulch at their root base at the very least make sure that they have really good drainage they cannot stand wet feet which is why they do so well in dry hot conditions so the first year when you go to plant it, of course, give it plenty of water during its first year until it gets established. Trim it by a third in the very, very early spring, and you will find that these things will just keep blooming and blooming and blooming for you on a yearly basis. And they're just gorgeous from a distance. Um, they really stand out. Now the colors in these are, are a wide variety. They vary from uh, pure white to light pink to a cranberry to a deep, deep purple. Uh, and they're all beautiful. And I purchased this one to actually replace an old lilac that I had transplanted last year. And the poor guy just didn't make it. I think it got too wet. And uh, it was kind of beat up to start with when I moved it. And I was moving it from the shade into the sun. Didn't quite make the transfer. So I'm coming up with a hardier one here and I'm gonna put it in its place. So there you go, butterfly bush or Budleia. Excellent for hot, dry conditions. Uh, another plant I wanted to introduce you to, I talked a little bit about these last year in one of my videos, I think it was May, and that is geraniums, perennial geraniums, and this one happens to be called Roxanne, and it's one of my favorites just because of the beautiful blue flowers that they get on them. They also come with a little white eye on the center, 
And these guys are tough as nails, which is why I like them. I love to put them in the front of the border when I need some color. And this particular variety, Roxanne, will actually start blooming now, and it just will not quit. It'll keep going right on up until fall. And this guy, which she here, is also semi-deer resistant. I've had them nip some of my flowers off from time to time. For the most part, they leave them alone. Now, let's see. Definitely likes full sun. And it gets about 20 to 24 inches high. It's hardy down to zone 5, which is great. Another minus 20 type hardiness. Very long blooming. It may slow down a little bit in the hot, hot sun, uh, but it'll kick right back in as soon as it cools off a little bit. So Roxanne geraniums, definitely recommend those. Um, excellent variety for hot, dry conditions. Okay. Another neat plant, and this is kind of, this is a new one for me. And I purchased them to bring them into the nursery just because it has lighter variegated foliage. And this is called a variegated nausea, or nadia, some people call it. And uh, this particular variety is called Thunder and Lightning. It's got a beautiful magenta flower on the top of it. And I intend to plant these in and amongst my lavender plants, as these are blooming at about the same time the lavenders are. Um, and I thought it looked really pretty with all the deep purples. And this is also extremely hardy. This is hardy down to zone 4, so minus 30 degrees. It'll only get about 18 to 24 inches high, so it's something I like to plant in between or on the outside of my plant borders. Um, makes a great cut flower. These will actually get long enough where you can cut them and bring them in. Extremely drought tolerant. Uh, what else can I tell you? It's an excellent plant for rockeries, uh, real sandy type conditions. It definitely prefers good drainage and loves the heat. It'll do very well in the full sun. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? It stays pretty compact. Um, according to this, it will only get maybe 12 to 18 inches wide, which is perfect for where I want to put it in between lavender. So, nausea is the name of this one, and of course I'll put the names of everything down here at the bottom of my video. But there's a fun, new, and exciting plant, and this color I just think looks great with the variegated foliage. It just kind of helps them to stand out. Okay, another one that's tough as nails, and a lot of you have probably heard of them before, and this is Coreopsis. Of course, all the plants I'm purchasing today, there's very few of them that actually have blooms on them, but I'll flash a picture of this one in the corner of the video so you can see what it looks like. And this particular guy, I can get the tag out, he is in there. There we go. Coreopsis, or Lil Bang Starlight, is the name of this variety. Now, most Coreopsis come in all shades of yellow and gold, um, and even a red or an auburn color. And I was attracted to this one because this is kind of a light pink with a dark magenta center on it, as you can see in the picture. Now, this guy is hardy to minus 20 degrees, and it'll get about 10, maybe 15 inches tall, and then just gets coated in these blooms and stays that way until the next frost. Um, what else can I tell you about this guy? Definitely has a dwarf mounded habit to him, and I also like him in the center or to the edge of a perennial bed, or even if you have evergreens, this just helps to break it up and throw in some color. Uh, but I really like the color on it. I haven't tried this particular variety yet, um, so it's going in the ground today, and we'll give it a try. But a really neat plant for full sun, uh, extremely drought tolerant once they're established, and uh, you'll just get years and years of enjoyment out of these as they just keep coming back year after year. So Coreopsis, Little Bang is the name of this variety. Some of the names they come up with, it's crazy. Okay, now this guy is called Catoni Aster, and I'll flash the name of that down at the bottom so you know how to spell it. Now Catoni Asters are an evergreen shrub. This particular one actually happens to lay flat along the ground. It's actually an excellent evergreen ground cover, especially in tough, sandy, clay-type soils um, on a hot, hot bank, which is exactly where this is going. I have a bank that faces due west. It gets that hot, searing heat during the afternoons, and it doesn't seem to care. Now, the reason I picked this shrub, the main reason, is not only does it get cute little white flowers on it in the early spring, 
but those get replaced by these bright red berries during the fall. And I've seen mine actually hang on to their berries all the way up until February when it's ready to leaf out and start blooming again. And this guy, I really like this one because it stays low. Cotoneasters can come in a real low growing, almost flat type of ground cover uh, plant, or you can get them as shrubs as well, really tough shrubs for just those hot, dry areas that you have a difficult time getting anything else to grow in. These will do that. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about it? The average size on this one is about a foot high, which is perfect, and it will spread eight to 10 feet wide awesome because I have a big bank that I'm trying to cover so I, I bought like four or five of these and they'll cover a lot of area. Um, it is also extremely hardy from zones five to eight and um, a lot of folks will use these in rock gardens, mass plantings. Um, for me of course I am using it um, in a very hot border uh, on the edge of a bank and uh, a lot of folks use these for a firescaping border as well so for those of you who live in areas that are you know, have a dangerous fire hazard supposedly during the summertime. These are actually very good for that as um, a lot of states are outlying any type of uh, pine bark or mulch of any kind up against a house or a foundation. Instead, they're starting to put in rock gardens. This is an excellent plant for that, um, really tough. And you can see it's beautiful. It's got all these beautiful uh, small leaves on it. So a great ground cover and something you will have color with all year round. It just kind of holds the spot as a ground cover. So I'm all over that today um, and get this bank covered up. <laughs> it's definitely really good for erosion control as well. And you really don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to trim them or, or do anything. Just plant them, keep them well watered their first year and walk away. My kind of plant. Okay, and then last but not least, I had to show you this guy. This is called Louisia and it's in the Portulaca family and it's actually got some of these thick kind of succulent type leaves and these are actually native here to North America they of course have hybridized them to get a lot of these great looking pink blooms I picked the brightest pinkest bloom <laughs> that I could find but they're available in shades of white, light pink, orange um, all kinds of colors I'll flash a few in the corners there for you so you can see them I really like these especially in a rockery or a garden area with a lot of sand or a lot of clay. They of course appreciate full sun. They have to have good drainage. So wherever you're putting them, make sure they're getting that. Um, and you just gotta think of them as like little alpine plants, something you would find up in the mountains somewhere. Now, Louisia got its name from Martha Lewis, who discovered these little plants on her little expeditions. And the native Indians here have actually used the root for sore throats and other ailments. It actually has medicinal qualities. Thus, it has a second name called bitterroot, which I thought was a terrible name for such a pretty plant. I, I like Louisia better, <laughs> personally. But these have a long history, so I, I encourage you to look up their history uh, just to learn a little bit more about them. But I like using these in with my succulents as well. And when I start getting into June and July, and we start getting into those really hot months, I'll be doing quite a few succulent videos just to show you all the different varieties um, that I have picked up at the nursery and what we're carrying. But these are a great mix with a lot of your succulents. And succulents are known for their bold leaves, their teeny tiny leaves, and all the different textures that you can get them in. And these are known for their blooms. And these will bloom from early spring through summer, and they'll probably quit just before fall. But you still got these great rosettes that you can look at. So if you've got an ugly spot in the garden where nothing wants to grow, and it's dry and real sunny, and just kind of crummy soil, in fact, when you go to plant these plants, unlike a lot of other plants, you don't want to put in a whole lot of compost with them, as that just helps to retain moisture at the roots, and that's something that they, they really don't like. They would prefer good drainage, but Louisia, Excellent little succulent plant to mix in those hot, dry gardens, and they're perfect along border edges, succulent gardens, in containers, um, just real versatile that way. And we're finding that the growers are bringing them out in multitudes of colors, just some beautiful colors that they're available in. So Louisia. Okay, so that's a quick rundown on hot, dry plants that you can put in those really hard areas to garden. And after this, I will flash up a quick tour of our nursery at its peak time during Mother's Day. <laughs> I apologize for just now getting this out, but it's busy. It's been a busy time of the year. 
So things are finally starting to calm down a little bit. We're back into a routine. Uh, we were just in recovery mode at the nursery this week, just cleaning up, filling holes, <laughs> and just recovering from the madness that has been going on over the last two to three weeks. Not only Mother's Day, but then a week later we have Memorial Weekend. So there you go. So anyway, I'll give you a quick tour of our nursery towards the end of this video. I hope you enjoy it. And of course, I want to thank all of you, those of you who have just subscribed, and for those of you who have been following along with me, I have just received some of the most awesome comments from you guys, and I'm so glad that I'm still here, still able to inspire you and bring you some more plants to look into, and of course purchase before it gets super, super hot here in the next six weeks. We've been pretty blessed here in Washington. This is actually a pretty cool day today. It's about 65, which is perfect for planting. So as soon as I'm done with this video, you know where I'll be. All right, you guys, I hope to, in a couple of weeks, give you a tour of my own yard. I am still tying up some loose ends, building some new raised beds for my veggies, and uh, getting my own yard taken care of now that I've helped everyone else with theirs. <laughs> One of the hazards of owning a nursery. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a fabulous spring. It's going to be summer before we know it, and I hope you're all enjoying it. Meanwhile, enjoy this little quick tour, and we'll talk next week. Bye for now. Hi, everybody. Well, today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the nursery here at Garden Style. Uh, I've got the car running. We're getting ready to pack it up. This is Saturday, the day before Mother's Day, and it is going to be busy. So I'm trying to get in a little early so that I can start doing a tour with you and um, clue you in on some new things that we've received into the nursery and show you a lot of color. So here we go. Well, here we are, Sunny Crest Nursery, living up to its name. It's going to be beautiful and 80 degrees today. And the first thing we're doing this morning is watering. <laughs> it's going to be 80 degrees today. So we got to get that out of the way before the stuff hits the fan. <laughs> Beautiful deciduous azaleas and roadies. I wish you could smell it. So just thought I'd introduce you to the shady side of town. This is a long bench of all of our shady characters, our shade-loving plants. Beautiful columbines. Look at that. Isn't that a cool variety? Deep purples. Little pieces of jewelry, bleeding heart. Succulent benches. 